This video is brought to you by NordVPN. After a short but sweet stop off in Da Nang, it is time to head to Hue, the ancient capital city of Vietnam. With so much to explore before our visas expire, we only have 24 hours to explore this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Our 24 hours in Hue starts right now. We're gonna head out and grab some dinner and see how much of the town we can see and then probably do some exploring tomorrow, so let's go. So we're going to a little restaurant called Maison Trang, which came highly recommended by a dear friend of ours. It looks like it's got fantastic Vietnamese food and that's what we're in the mood for, right here. To your left. Mm, it smells good. Yeah, it does. Thank you. So we have to get Bun Bo Wei. Yeah, of course. Bun Bo Wei. Yeah, probably. probably. When you pronounce things properly in Vietnam, they get very excited. <laughs> when you say them improperly, they like giggle and laugh and try to help you. It's very, very cute. Thank you. Okay guys, we ordered entirely too much food. <laughs> it all looks really, really good though, and it comes so highly recommended. There have been people just flooding in here, so I'm very excited to give it a try. I've already taken one bite of these spring rolls because I could not wait, and they're absolutely delicious. There's stuff with pork, there's bean sprouts, a little bit of lettuce, mint I think is in there, and then they also give you the chili and the peanut dipping sauce, which is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm gonna take one more bite before I try the other stuff. That's amazing. I'm gonna try the Bun Bo Hue next. We had this in Dalat, and it was pretty good. It was the first time, so I had nothing to compare it to. I'm excited to try it this time. I'm gonna put a healthy dose of bean sprouts because I absolutely love them. Ooh, yeah, give me some lime. Ah. All right. Mm -hmm. Definitely prefer these over the ones in the lot. The noodles are cooked perfectly. These are delicious. We tried Boon Tit Noong last night at the night market actually, and we're gonna try it here. This one looks way better. Cover it with a peanut sauce, get it with a little bit of soy sauce. Is it better here? Oh yeah, so better. It's got like crispy onions and sesame seeds, as well as this amazing barbecue pork and garlic. And the noodles, like you said, just like in the bumbo way, are cooked absolutely perfectly. Okay, so we just got done with our dinner and that was absolutely incredible. One of the best meals that we have had in Vietnam. It's just such a cool dining experience. It feels like we're in the home of the owners uh, just eating in their kitchen and they were kind enough to bring us tea at the beginning of the meal which is a pleasant surprise and everything was delicious we ordered way too much food and we ate all of it so we decided that since our hotel and the restaurant we were at are just kind of right in the main center of where everything happens here in Hue, that we take a detour and go check out the walking street we're not going to be able to see it tomorrow night and we probably won't stay out super long but we wanted to see what it was all about. Who's an old pug? Oh, it's a black species. Oh, there you go. Pug rooms. Street dogs are the best part of traveling. This thing is wild. That's our future when AI takes over. The new face of ChatGPT. I think we found the walking street. It doesn't really look like it's popped off yet. The streets are still predominantly empty. It's only like 7 o'clock though. It'll be like boom, 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 boom come 10 o'clock. Walking Street. We're gonna call it a night. We've got to wake up early to explore all of the sites, but first impressions, I think the city is 
awesome. We saw a little bit about the modern culture here in Huey, and tomorrow we're gonna check out some of the ancient culture. Bye. Good morning. So we didn't wake up quite as early as we planned. Shocker. <laughs> but we're here in front of the Perfume River and we're gonna grab some coffee real quick before going and checking out the Citadel and a bunch of other ancient sites. Let's go. but they've kind of like done it for me and it's layered it's just this amazing concoction <laughs> I need to start getting these more often yeah. this might be the best iced coffee I've had in Vietnam for sure oh yeah I don't even know where we're at Crew Fuel Coffee yeah it's right across the bridge on the Perfume River and yeah I think this is my favorite coffee that I've had in all of Vietnam for so sure far. this is a win Oh, I love it. And then you clear your palate with this delicious tea, which I still don't know what it is. It smells so nice. I wonder yeah. if it's just like green tea. It smells really, really nice. Yeah. Like I would wear this smell <laughs> as a perfume. <laughs> Splash! <laughs> we're going to enjoy these coffees and then we're going to head off to the Citadel. <laughs> It may seem like we're constantly on the move, but in reality, we spend most of our time sitting in cafes, editing videos, and figuring out our next travel destination. Unfortunately, this can leave us vulnerable to cyber attacks. Imagine you're at a coffee shop and you connect to the free Wi-Fi. Meanwhile, some creep is impersonating the cafe's network, and now they have access to all of your data. The good news is there is a solution, and you can protect your data with just a few clicks. We've been using NordVPN since the start of our travels, and we feel safe knowing we're protected online. If you don't know what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network, which basically encrypts your traffic and changes your IP address, giving you complete privacy and enhanced security. To stay safe online, click the link in our description or go to nordvpn.com slash Mike and Ashley. Aside from the security benefits that NordVPN provides, it also gives us access to streaming sites that we otherwise couldn't watch while traveling abroad. When taking a break from editing, I love logging into HBO or Disney Plus to catch up on all my favorite movies and shows. Because those sites aren't available in most of the countries we travel to, all I have to do is connect to the US with NordVPN and I have access to all of the content I'd watch from home. On top of all these amazing benefits, if you've signed up today using the link in our description or by going to nordvpn.com slash Mike and Ashley, you'll receive an exclusive deal from NordVPN and get four extra months for free. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee so you can try it out risk-free. So click the link in our description or head to nordvpn.com slash Mike and Ashley to get started today. Thank you NordVPN for supporting our channel. Now let's get back to the video. the south gate which is also known as the meridian gate i'm actually super excited to check this place out whoa look at that gate this is probably the hottest it's been so definitely bring sunscreen, bring water. There's vending machines everywhere in case you forget. So the history of these cannons is pretty cool. After overthrowing the Taesan dynasty, the Gyalong Emperor ordered the military to confiscate all of the bronze weapons and melt them down to be created into these nine holy cannons to make memories of the future. Onward to the Meridian Gate. There's this huge structure with a giant Vietnamese flag on it, and it is just gorgeous. And it's in front of this huge courtyard, too. Hello, uh, two please for the Imperial. Come on. All right, so we got our tickets to go into the Imperial City. It's 400,000 dong total, so 200,000 per person, uh, which comes out to roughly about 17 US dollars, if I'm doing my math correctly. So definitely more than we were planning on spending, but is what it is. I'm super excited, and I'm sure it'll be worth it. So let's go check it out. We don't have very long. <laughs> 
So right behind me is the Meridian Gate, which is the main and southern entrance to the Imperial City inside the Citadel of Hue. It was built in 1833 by Emperor Min Mang in the traditional Wien style. And interestingly enough, it was modeled after the original Meridian Gate in Beijing, China. So this place is a huge and popular place for all kinds of people to take Instagram photos. This place is epic. It feels like we have just been transported into ancient Vietnam. Yeah. And also like ancient China, kind of. Yeah, this place is incredible. Let's get going inside. I'm so excited. Yeah, this yeah. This place is so cool. I'm so glad we didn't A, skip Hue and B, skip coming to this and just go grab lunch or something. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, let's go. Wow, this place is beautiful. And that Meridian Gate, like, holy cow. Yeah, I can see why it's the main entrance. So behind me is where the Taihoa Palace used to stand. And right now it is just rubble and scaffolding. It is wild. They've got this giant facade up so that you can kind of get a glimpse of what it used to look like and what it will look like after the construction. But I kind of snuck my head back there just to see what it was like and if there was any of it standing. There's really not much. It is crazy. I wonder how long it's gonna take to rebuild it. It'd be how, cool. How, how long? How long is it? Four minutes. What do you think? I uh, two, please. Yes. These are like our favorite thing. And then a water, because it is so hot. I got taro flavor, which for those of you who don't know in the States, because I didn't, is a Japanese sweet potato. And then Mike got a milk tea, which we're both obsessed with. One fishy. Two fishy. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie, I think I like mine better. Did you and like I this? I love milk tea. Did you like yours this better? This is really good, yeah. It's really good. Mm. <laughs> Bad to tell. Mm. <laughs> Both are very good. Yeah. I love how old and ancient all the walls look. And there's just like moss and lichen growing on them. It is the ancient city. Yeah, right? I like museums, but this is always so much cooler. So this place is massive, and all the people who try to take you here in the little bike tuk-tuks always are like, oh, one, two hours. One, two hours if you like sprint through it. If you're actually trying to see it, I feel like it takes like three or four hours, really. Oh, 
Yes, watch your head on that thing. Because holy hell, that hurt. I always forget that I'm tall in Asia and then I'm always very quickly reminded. Ugh. We're in a little park right now. It is absolutely beautiful and very, very well maintained. Uh, it's a little bit towards the end of the Imperial City, but it is gorgeous. I'm making my way towards, I'm not really sure what it is. I thought it was like maybe a well, but now that I'm getting closer, I'm not so sure, but it's got this beautiful big tree and stairs leading up to it. I was expecting definitely not a well not even sure what it would have been but I am actually glad I came up here because there's a pretty good viewpoint of the garden so not such a bad thing this garden is amazing there's all kinds of I mean, I'm not even sure if they're bonsai trees but they look like bonsai trees they're these little tiny trees in pots and I feel like that's a bonsai tree right I don't know if like a bonsai tree is a very specific type of tree. I was pretty sure it was a way of manicuring and growing a tree to where you basically halt its growth because you keep it in a smaller pot so its roots can't get that big and then you trim it. Whoa, that is beautiful. Cool, there's fish in there. We almost walked by this garden. We almost were like, oh, it's just a garden. This honestly might be one of my favorite parts of the whole like imperial city. Okay, so we found this little bin and it has fish food in it. So we're gonna leave a donation and feed these little koi fish that are inside. We're the only donation that's surprising. Or, or they just came and collected it. Or they just, yeah. All right. Let's see if these fishies are hungry. Oh wow, there's big koi fish in there. Some little babies too, but. Yeah, they're hungry. So we're currently in the Thigh Bin Reading Pavilion, which was the Emperor's Reading Room. It's distinguished by the beautiful landscaping and also the pottery mosaics that are inside of this building. Let's go check them out. I thought the last garden with all the bonsai trees was amazing. This place is beautiful. But this is wild. I don't know if it's part of his like reading room or what. No. There's a little audio guide, but of course we didn't opt for it. So I don't know what this is, but it is stunning. There is so many peaceful places that I would just love to sit down and reconnect with nature. And Zen is the perfect word for it. And it's so well preserved. God, this place is so peaceful too. Okay, so this is garden goals. This is what I want our garden to look like when we finally find a place to live. There's little sprinklers everywhere coming out of the rocks, obviously to keep everything watered, but I wish it was watering me. <laughs> Can you imagine like living in this city? 
Yeah, that's the thing I keep forgetting. It's like, this isn't an this imperial is a, house. This is an imperial city. Yeah, like a whole city. This is the Doyette T. Dong Royal Theater. Back in the day, the emperor and his family would come here and they would watch traditional performances and they would also use it as a place to hold banquets for foreign envoys that would come and visit the imperial city. Now, it's more of like a cultural site where they set up exhibits and allow people to enter and learn a little bit more about the history of this place. They've got a ton of instruments that I've never seen or heard of before. Like this right here, they're stone chimes. <laughs> and. I don't even know how that would work. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And then there's a lot of really, really, really old pictures, which is just so cool. So you can really envision what this entire city must have looked like back in the day. I mean, these pictures have to be from the 1800s, and it's just, it's really, really neat. Like this right here, this is a buffalo horn that they must have blown. They've also got a sea snail horn here. And then these beautiful costumes that the musicians wore. And they're so well preserved. I'm not sure if they're original or if they're reproductions, but oh my God, look at this one, it's so ornate. Like the stitching and the embroidery is just immaculate and the colors are just so bright. And then there's just a bunch of books and a bunch of music notes and some of these awesome masks, different paintings and these pictures, they wore them during the performances, it's wild. They're just so well preserved. <laughs> this one looks like Deadpool. <laughs> Okay, so we just found out that there's actually a twice daily performance at 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock. The tickets are an additional fee, but if you're able to be here during that time, definitely check it out. I would love to see the performance, but unfortunately the timing is not going to work out for us today. They are doing a sound check right now, which is pretty cool though. So we get a little glimpse of what's going to happen, but we're going to have to move on, so boo. Okay, so we just walked into this place. I was hoping that it was a restroom, but I see all of these costumes here. I'm pretty sure that you can pay to get your picture taken, and there's even an option to have like servants in the picture with you. So I'm not sure that's what that is, but let's go find out. Okay, yeah, so if I'm understanding this sign correctly, you can pay 135,000 dong to basically dress up and sit on a throne. Now, if you want to dress up, sit on a throne, and have two servants at your feet, you can pay 195,000 dong, which is interesting, I guess. But I think we're gonna skip that for today. I just need a restroom. It's very fancy, though. I kind of hope we're getting to the end of this just because I am extremely hungry. But at the same time, I don't want it to end because it's so pretty. What? That's awesome. There's like a hole in the wall. Yeah, we have to go that way. Damn. Through the hole in the wall? I mean... Sign me up. I don't think this is where we're going. <laughs> I don't think this is where we're supposed to go either. All right. Back through the hole in the wall. Uh, we always manage to find the path less traveled. Here we are. <laughs> There's like this covered building, lots of shade. But no, no, not us. <laughs> We'd rather take the scenic route. It's very old. All right, do you want to go in there and go to the shade, or do you want to go this way? I think shade. I think I need shade right Shade. Now. This way? Yeah. Okay. It is hot. There's this scale model of what the city used to look like in its prime. And obviously the buildings are no longer standing. Well, most of the buildings are no longer standing, but it's so well done. Looks like the roofs are made of toothpicks. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's
it's really beautiful. It's so cool. It really gives you a picture of yeah. that was a legitimate city. Because like, all of the major buildings are still standing. I mean, obviously, with the exception of ones that they're doing renovations on and completely rebuilding. But there's so many of these empty spaces, like through that little hole in the wall. I don't think this is where we're supposed to go either. That are just fields at this point. And this gives you a lot of perspective as to what was in those fields. We keep moving before we finally get to go have lunch. God, these windows. Like, you can just tell how old this stuff was. You can't fake that type of, like, antiquity. If anybody is in the Facebook group, uh, things designed by people who don't have to clean them, <laughs> this would be a perfect example. <laughs> yeah, this would maybe the first example of things that were designed by people who don't have to clean them. This whole place, really, I mean, yeah, look at these right. rafters. Like, how are you going to dust and clean these rafters? Did they dust? They had servants to dust. That is true. <sighs> it is hot, and it's also 3 o'clock. And our bus leaves in, like, two hours. I think we've seen most of this place. I don't know that we've seen all of it, but according to the map, I think we've seen most of the major points. It's part museum, part UNESCO World Heritage Site, all incredible. Just the architecture alone is breathtaking. Hi, lovely. Hello. Ready to get food? So ready. We're gonna be on a bus for like 13 hours. I'm scared that it's gonna be shorter than 13 hours because then we're gonna get there at like five in the morning and we don't have a place to stay yet because <laughs> That's what we do. Because Ashley is the best planner ever. Yeah, so fingers crossed that it will actually be 13 and a half hours and that's it. <laughs> At least you fit in the bus. That is true. It's Let's check out this last little thing on our way out and then go grab some food. Yeah, we might have to get someone to drive us to food. You definitely, yeah. I don't know what it is because I didn't look it up. <laughs> Beautiful. I like all the little ferns that grow out of everything yeah. here. It's so pretty. Nature's kind of reclaiming this ancient city. Yeah. I actually found out what this gate is for. It's actually the entrance to the Queen Mother and the Emperor's Grandmother's living quarters. Now at one time, this place consisted of about 10 buildings and it included everything from a Buddhist temple to a storehouse and even a pleasure pavilion. What's a pleasure pavilion? Uh, it's like where she went to read and just like look at beautiful things. Oh, it's like a playroom. Yeah, basically. Okay. It's not what it sounds like. <laughs> Alright. Let's go. Cool. I love your little speed walk. Hue might be one of my favorite destinations in all of Vietnam so far. I know we've got a lot of beauty to see up north, but out of the places we've been, it's really, really tough. Hue's up there though. Top three for sure. After a fully packed 24 hours in Hue, we can confidently say this has been one of the highlights of our adventures in Vietnam. From delicious food and coffee to one of the most impressive archaeological sites we've ever visited, Hue should be on everyone's Vietnam itinerary. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe because the next time you see us, we'll be in Hanoi.